right. All right, all right. Well, hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Right? I think that extra hour of sleep, right? We're all feeling excited again. And I, I will say it's good. I like that, the fallback thing. But the reality is for someone with a really weird personality like myself, smartphones have really taken a lot of the fun out of these daylight savings days, huh? Because I used to love to see who's going to show up to church late and not shame them publicly, but just kind of, you know, get a, a little chuckle on the smartphones. I mean, you don't even have to know it's going on and you're still going to get up at the time. So God bless, I guess, technology. Um, Man, it's no, yeah, no microwaves. You still got to do those things, but, um, but it's good to see you, and we're just glad to be in God's house, right, together, and uh, I just believe God has something for us, right? We're not just here to hang out for an hour and 15 or an hour and a half or whatever it's going to be, but our purpose is that we would encounter Jesus and that we would be changed and that we would have faith to continue to live the life that he has for us. Amen. Okay, well, we are going to just keep moving this morning. Um, we've been talking for the last several weeks, a series called Family Matters and All Things Family, a little marriage, a little parenting, a little about just the power of God's family. And so we're going to continue just for a couple more weeks, and um, I hope you've been blessed, and uh, it's been fun to go through it. But I'm going to give you just a little bit of insight into uh, my life just for a moment, um, it's, uh, you know, I, I may look perfect. I'm definitely not. Just talk to anyone that knows me. Um, but my wife and I, we've been married for like almost 17 years. And, you know, marriages and, and couples, you all have those things in your marriage, right? Those, you know, those, those things. And um, my wife and I, we have this thing. And, and I don't know what it is. And I just want to apologize if there's any doctors in the room. Like, I just, I love you. Come on. I love our doctors. Um, one of my, my children's doctors is actually a good friend of mine. It's kind of a weird relationship. We just like, you know, he really likes me. I like him. And it's just out of being my kid's doctor. But I've got this thing with doctors. I think the last time I was at a doctor's office, they took me through this, like, test to see, like, how old I was on the insides. It was like this thing that was going to tell your overall health. And so I went through this thing. And he pretty much said, you're as healthy as a 15-year-old boy. And I didn't know whether to, like, be ashamed or say thank you. Um, so anyways, I was like, sweet, I'm good. But the thing is with me and doctors is I don't go to the doctor just to go to the doctor. Come on, right? I, I don't. Some of you are like, you know, I, I'm not really talking really spiritual right now. I just am like, if it ain't broke, I'm good. Right? My wife and I, when we had a, our younger kids and they had these things called well child checkups, I was like, Why? They're breathing, they're smiling, they're eating, they're exiting things, right? So nothing's blocked. We'll just keep it, you know, PG here. It's all good. And she was like, no, but we got to take them to a well child checkup to make sure they're good. And I'm like, I don't need a doctor to tell me they're good. They good. So anyways, we've got, we've got these things. And the, one of the last times I was at the doctor, um, after he told me I was 15 again, that was great, um, I went, and he started, they ask you questions when you go to the doctor, and they begin to say, well, what, how long have you had this pain? And you're like, I don't know, it's just probably, you know, 10 years ago, I started getting this knee pain, and, you know, it's just probably part of getting old, and he's like, no, that's not normal, right? Doctors say, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be having those things, you shouldn't be doing these, these symptoms, and, and for us, I'm like, oh, I just figured it was part of getting old, and so... Um, He's like, and then he begins to ask other questions, and he starts asking other things, and he's like, you know, th your, your body's meant to function a certain way, and the things that you're describing to me tell me that your body's not functioning the way that it should function, so you should do something about that. And this isn't a plug. All you husbands are saying, great, now my, you're going to make me go to the doctor. My wife's going to say, Pastor Justin said, you got to go to the doctor. Listen, you got to figure out if you need to go to the doctor or not, so do that. But I think my point is, I think our relationship with Jesus can be compared to the way that we treat doctors sometimes. Because we go to Jesus, and Jesus would ask us questions like, hey, how long have you doubted my word? 
you didn't used to doubt my word. How long have you doubted my word? And we would say, well, I, I don't know. I just, just, I still read my Bible, Jesus, and it's all good. And he would ask other questions like, when did you start believing that I'm not faithful anymore? Because when you were younger, you used to believe that I was faithful. But you don't think I'm faithful to you anymore. And we go, well, I don't know. There was this one time, right? We start t telling Jesus this time. Other questions he would say, you didn't used to walk in fear of the future. Like, now you're fearing what's to come. Is it? And we say, well, you know, well, two years ago, Jesus, there was this thing called COVID, you know. And I don't know if you've heard of it. But it's really, you know, it's, it's bad and it's gonna, it needs to cause us to fear. And Jesus would say, no, I, I haven't changed. Hmm. Hmm. Jesus would ask us other questions about our pain. And he'd say things like, when did you stop believing that your sins weren't forgiven? And you started walking in shame again. Right? So that's the same thing we do with our doctor where we just accept things as normal. We do that with our spiritual life. Hmm. Jesus would say, man, I, I'm, God, I'm Jehovah Shalom. I'm the God of peace. That's one of my names. When did you stop walking in peace? Oh, well, you know, my life's pretty bad right now, and I don't know what the future holds. And, and he would say, no, I still am the God of peace. You know, I think a lot of times we go through life and these questions really reveal to me how much we're not walking in the new nature that Christ has already given us, right? We start walking in the old nature, the old way, the fear, the lack of peace, the doubt. You know, the last year and a half or two years, I don't even know how long it's been, right, the season that we continually find ourselves in. You know, I think one of the great things that's come out of it, at least in my life, is I've realized that God's called me to walk in the Full measure of his power, not just partial measure. Amen? That there were things in my life that I was just used to serving God with a lower level of power in this COVID season. If it's done anything, it's done something in my spirit that said, no, I'm going to walk in the fullness of what God has for me. And I think if we're not careful, spiritual saints, moms and dads, husbands and wives, whoever I'm talking to this morning, Followers of Jesus, if we're not careful, we will begin walking in a lower level of power and authority and cheapen the gospel in our lives. And if we're not careful, we will pass that gospel on to the next generation instead of the gospel that is filled with signs, wonders, and power. Amen? So we've got to really be careful as moms and dads that we are passing on the right gospel to the next generation. Right, so looking through scripture, we see this both ways. There is, uh, we know what spiritual inheritance is, don't we? We know what inheritance is, right? And it's that in the natural, okay, that is, that is good. But there is spiritual inheritance that God wants you to pass on to the next generation. Your sons, your daughters, your spiritual sons, your spiritual daughters. Okay, so if there is spiritual inheritance, I also believe there is spiritual bondage that we could pass on to the next generation. Okay, so if we're not careful, if we don't understand this, instead of passing on a great spiritual heritage, we will pass on great spiritual bondage to the next generation. Okay, so there in Numbers, uh, in Numbers chapter 14, it says this. It says, the Lord is slow to anger, and he's filled with unfailing love. He forgives every kind of sin, amen, and rebellion, but he does not excuse the guilty, he lays the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and the fourth generations. Okay, so there's this principle that if we don't deal with certain sins in our life, and if we don't pass on a positive godly inheritance, we will pass on a negative and spiritual inheritance to the next generation. Okay, so I'll say it this way, that the iniquity... It's another word for sin. And the sin that is in my life, if I don't conquer those things, that sin could be my son's strongholds. Okay? See this principle. 
Okay, so we see it in the negative, but also in the positive. So if I walk in a level of spiritual authority, of spiritual power, if I walk in faith, I believe that I can pass those things on to the next generation too. Not just the bad juju and the bad stuff, right? We can pass on the godly heritage that God has for us. Amen? Come on, I'm, re- I'm, I'm preaching today. Turn in your Bibles. We're going to read a story, Genesis chapter 35. And I'm just going to read and then make some points. It says in verse 9 of Genesis 35, it says, God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called Jacob, but I call you Israel instead. So he called his name Israel, and God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come from your own body. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac your forefathers, I will give to you. And I will give the land to your offspring after you. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob, who's now called Israel, set up a pillar in the place where he'd spoken with God, a pillar of stone. He poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the place where God had spoken with him Bethel. Verse 16, then they journeyed, so we got a story going on here. Verse 16, then they journeyed from Bethel. When they were still some distance away from Ephrath, Rachel, his wife, went into labor, and she had hard labor. And all the women in the room that's had babies said, get it. And all of us that haven't had babies don't know what we're talking about. (laughs) So she had, she went into labor, she had hard labor, and when her labor, labor was at its hardest, the midwife said to her, don't fear, for you will have another son. And as her soul was departing, for she was dying, she called his name Benoni, but the father called him Benjamin. So we've got this story That if we read in the lines, it's a very hard story. It's a very sad story. There's a lot of things in this story that we can talk about. The first thing I want to talk about today is moms and dads and young people. Don't forget to tell others about your God encounter. Jacob had an encounter with God where God changed his name. And this encounter changed a lot about him. Bethel, the place that Jacob named, the place where God encountered him. Bethel means the anointed place or the house of God. Listen, we need to be careful in the midst of everything going on that we don't neglect to tell the stories of where God's anointing showed up on the spot and changed everything. Okay, we've got to get really good about telling those God and stories, not just so they can be duplicated, but so that they can be expected to happen again. So God appears to Jacob just like he did with his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, okay, and now we know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, but before Jacob had the encounter, it was just Abraham and Isaac. So Isaac, or excuse me, Jacob knew that if his fathers had encounters, that God still wanted to encounter him. Okay, so there was an expectancy in Jacob's life of God wants to encounter me much like he did my fathers and those before me. Okay, the second thing I want to say this morning is that every generation needs to encounter God and have a fresh revelation of God for themselves. Okay? We got, we got to understand that. They need to have not secondhand revelation, right? Firsthand revelation of who God is. And here's what I know about religion. I love religion. I love my relationship with Jesus. But a religious spirit would like to come in and it would like to take what God's done in me and just be like, it has to be like this in the next generation. Like, this is how it works, period. 
And can I say that's not God's design. God wants to pass on the values to the next generation, but God wants to be the one to arrange the encounter for the next generation that is going to suit the next generation's needs. Amen. So a religious spirit says, well, hey, this is how it's worked in the past, and so we've just got to d- duplicate it. No, God doesn't always want to duplicate things. He wants to pour a fresh revelation on the next generation. Listen, we can talk about God's glory all we want. Oh, God's glory is so good. You should try it out. And here's the reality. The only way to really understand God's glory is to experience it. I can tell my kids, God is good, and they go, all the time, right? <laughs> all the time. No. Right? I can tell them all day long about God's goodness, but until they experience God's goodness from themselves, they won't understand it. They've got to experience it. So Jacob has an encounter, right? Just like Abraham and Isaac. He encounters God, and here's what we see in verse 11. And I believe that every encounter that God has with his people is so that we would get a deposit of his name, his nature, and his character. So Jacob encounters God, and in verse verse 11, it says, I am the mighty God. Okay, that is one of the names of God. There's a lot of them. The mighty God, it's El Shaddai. So verse 11 God says, I am the mighty God. And this is what the mighty God means. It means he is known as mighty. He's the all-powerful one. He's unconquerable. He's the undefeated champion. He's everlasting in nature, not just because he's all-powerful, but he has the ability to outlast all others. So God is saying, I'm just not going to overpower you. I'm going to overpower you, and I'm going to overpower you again and again, and I will outlast my enemies. El Shaddai, right? The mighty God. Um, More meanings of his name means that he's eternally capable of all his people's needs. Listen, our God is the mighty God, and he is more than capable to take care of your needs, your wants, and your lack that's in your life. Come on, we need to hear that this morning. He is the mighty God. It continues, and it means that he is the God of more than enough. How many believe that this morning? That he is the God that is more than enough. And here's what I love about this name, uh, El Shaddai, is it pretty much... If I could say it this way, it's he covers every part of who he is. This name, El Shaddai, it covers every part. So you may know God's name as uh, Jehovah Shalom, God of peace. Well, El Shaddai, the mighty God, means he is overwhelming in his peace. He's overwhelming in every part of his character and nature. Do you get me this morning? Okay, so this is like a good name to know. (laughs) Right? It's like everything God is and a little bit more. So Jacob has this encounter with the Almighty God. You know, and I'll just I'll just go off cuff just for a little bit because I just I just can't help myself. (laughs) Listen, in this season that we find ourselves in, we need a fresh encounter with the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. I am not anti-information. Information is good. I am not anti-science. That is good. I am not anti-doctor. I I joke about doctors, but I'm grateful. (laughs) But I believe that we need an encounter with the Almighty God because I believe that my faith in the God Almighty can change the facts of my life. Okay, so no diagnosis, no information. Our God, the Almighty God, is more than enough. Marcy read Psalms 91, right? That's kind of been a great scripture in this season. He's the the shelter, right? He's our refuge, right? It talks about any plague coming near your dwelling. Listen, my mighty God can keep me from harm. 
my mighty God can deliver me from my enemies. Okay? God wants us to be a product of our faith, but unfortunately, I think we've embraced that we are a product of our behavior. Listen, God does not want you to be a product of your behavior. God does not want you to be a product of your bondage. God wants you to, to be a product of your faith. Almighty God. You know, in this season, I think a lot about why people are the way they are. Have you ever thought that? Anyone, right? I look at people and I look at some of their behavior and in my flesh I think, man, you are really crazy. <laughs> You've really lost it. Like if, you, if I were to show you your behavior on a cell phone video, you would go, I have lost it, right? We look at people and if we're not careful, we'll get really judgmental of people in this season. We'll get really judgy and we'll get really cynical about people's behavior. And here's the reality is I don't get mad at people anymore for their crazy behavior. I really want to. But here's what I've realized. We all are a product of how we were raised. I'm not going to get mad at people anymore for living in a traumatized way. Because when they walk in a traumatized behavior, it's because they've been traumatized. So I'm not going to get mad at them because they've experienced things that they should have never experienced in their life. Right? And now they've surrendered their logic to fear. They've surrendered all these things to their trauma. So I don't get mad anymore. I pray for them because I know that God wants to deliver them from their trauma. So I think it's easy to look at the next generation. And I keep looking at these guys because they're, they're in the front row. I, it's easy to look at the, the lack and the failure of the next generation. It's easy to look at the failure of your spouse and go, oh, man, look at, look at that. Why, why are they so crazy? Listen, it would be very easy for us to say things like, oh, you know, our last name is Garland. It would be very easy for me to say, oh, the Garland family, they just always struggle with this. Right? They're just, oh, Garlands, yeah, they're just X. They're just loud. Or they're just stubborn. Oh, they're just, they have no self-control. Right? It's very easy to look at the behavior and label the behavior. So what, what do we need to do as parents? I think one of the things that we need to do is we need to identify in our lives those areas of stronghold, bondage, curses, and pains of our past so that we can walk in a new level of anointing. Listen, we can become more than our name. Hear me this, you hear me? Jacob, the story we read, one of the meanings of his name was a heel-grabbing deceiver. Thanks. We can become more than our name. He, from the very beginning of his life, was labeled a heel-grabbing deceiver. Listen, he was identified by his mom in his human behavior from years from his childhood. So he was given a label based off his behavior of grabbing a heel from a season in his life when he was immature. I think the enemy does that in our lives. He wants to identify us by things that we've done in our immaturity in our past. Oh, you're just X. Oh, you're just that. Listen, in, in these days... A name was not just a name. A name was tied to destiny. Okay, a name could also be a curse. Right now, we don't think about meanings of names. It's just like, what sounds cool? I'm going to name you blank, right? I'm going to name you Jude. I'm going to name you Daniel. I'm going to name you Josh. I'm going to name you a moon unit if you're into weird names. Okay, we don't think about the meaning. I don't know a moon unit yet, but I've, I've heard of one. Right? But we, a name in those days was more than just a name. A name could be a curse because it was part of your inheritance and part of your destiny. So think about Jacob. His whole life, he'd go introduce himself and say, Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm the heel-grabbing deceiver. My name is Jacob. I am the one, I'm the con man. I'm the dishonest one. I'm the manipulator. I'm the one who takes shortcuts. Nice to meet you. 
Because his name was a curse and it was tied to his identity. And here's what I, 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 I see in this story is this name, Jacob, wasn't given to him by his enemies. This curse, this name was spoken to him by his mother. Parents. They saw his behavior as negative, right? Heel grabber. And they spoke something over him. Listen. Listen. Rather than looking at the negative behavior, I believe God wants us to look at the redemptive qualities in our sons and our daughters. Because, yeah, he maybe was a heel grabber, but I also would say he was an overcomer. He was a fighter. He was uh, diligent. He was determined. Come on, parents, we can't just look at the negative behavior and call it out, but can we believe that there's some redemptive qualities that we just need to see God redeem in our sons and our daughters and in our spouses? Come on. Parents, our words have the power of life and death, blessing and cursing. Literally, we can speak curses over each other If we're not careful so easily, how about things like you'll never change? Thanks. You've always, you'll always be like that. You'll never amount to, right? Those are curses. And if we're not careful, we get so used to just walking and and we'll, we'll start cursing people all day long if we're not careful. Listen, you are more than the negative qualities in your life. Listen, God wants us to be more aware of the redemptive redemptive aspects of our character than just the negative aspects. Listen, so we need to identify strongholds, curses, and pains of our past. The next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about being careful that we don't curse our promise because of the pain. We don't curse our promise because of the pain. So we talked about Jacob. I want to talk a little bit about Rachel. Rachel was a great woman with great faith who was a hero. God did amazing things in Rachel. But things with Rachel didn't end well. She was godly. She persevered. She was faithful. But at the end of her life, it caught up with her. She wanted a child. And she and her husband wanted a child and believed for a child. And here's the cool thing. God gave them a child. In fact, the name of their first child, Joseph, his name literally means God will give you another. So they believed for this thing. God gave them a son and they named him. Oh, and by the way, you're going to have more promise, right? You're going to have another son. It's not, this isn't it. Come on, that's a pretty cool answer to prayer, amen? Pretty awesome. So she wanted a child. God gave her a child. She contended. She believed for another. She got pregnant. She was walking in God's promise. And it was time for her to give birth. And the Bible says that it got bad. Real bad. And at some point, the pain of childbirth blinded her from seeing God's prophetic destiny over this promise anymore. She was so much in pain that she didn't see God's destiny over the son that she was about to give birth to. The pain was so great, she ended up cursing her promise. Hmm. Listen, good people can release bad things into their families if they don't deal with their own pain. Listen, if we don't deal with our own pain, we will curse our own families, our own sons, and our own daughters if we don't deal with our own pain. Listen, so in labor, the longer she endured, the the more rational thought left her mind. The the harder the pain was, she thought more and more about the pain and less and less about God's promise. If the pain in your life 
is too unbearable. I want to remind you of God's promise. Listen, she was a good mom in her right mind. She never would have cursed her own sons. No good parent wants to do that. But the pain overwhelmed her. And how did she curse him? By naming him Ben Onai. Ben Onai. In her pain, she gave birth. She said, and you shall be called Ben Onai. And then she died. Ben Onai means son of my pain. In her last breath, she named her son her pain. She cursed her son. So do we understand what happened in the story? She, she, she dies. The midwife has a baby and has a mother who's just been named pain of my son, the son of my pain. Hey, what's your name? Oh, my mother's pain, the one that killed my mother. Try that one on, right? Listen, the last thing I want to talk about today is that our breakthrough can pave a way for others. Our breakthrough can pave a way for others. So here's this father, Jacob, who just several weeks ago, some time ago, had an encounter with God that changed everything. God changed his name from a heel-grabbing deceiver He's had this breakthrough. And the midwife, I picture, this isn't in the Bible. The midwife brings him his son, and he holds his son. And he looks at his son, and he says, your mother calls you Ben, Ben Onai. And he looks at this baby, and he says, you were misnamed. You are not the son of your mother's pain. You are more than a conqueror. Here's what you are to me. And he renames him from son of my mother's pain to Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. So he takes this baby who's the pain of his mother, and he says to him, he says, you will not be called that. This is what I call you. You are more than a conqueror. Listen, Jacob, the father who's now called Israel, for a lifetime he was known by his immature behavior, by the deceiver, the con man. He knew what it was like to live with ridicule. But Jacob had just broken the curse off himself. Now he can break the curse off that baby. Listen, he would say, I'm sure he would say, I know what it's like to be mislabeled. I know what it's like to be given the wrong name. I'm not going to put you through that pain that I went through. Listen, I'm, he says, I'm not going to let my son be cursed from birth. Listen, moms and dads, let the pain that you've endured in your life be the motiv motivating factor to see those curses broken over the next generation. Listen, because Jacob broke, this curse was broken in his life, he was able to break that curse off his son. I'm going to have our worship team come up. Listen, there's curses that God wants to reverse in your life today. There's curses that God wants you to break over your family line today. Listen, you are the curse breaker of your family. Your obedience to walk in repentance is going to give you the ability to break things off your family. Listen, on Friday night, we had this thing called Redemption Stories, and it was a couple. It was a marriage edition. It was fun. If you weren't here, it was good. We'll probably have another. 
But we sat and listened to a, a couple who shared of their brokenness, who shared of their pain, who shared of what a horrible foundation they started their family on. And they said, but God has freed us and we are building a new legacy. Listen, parents, husbands, wives, you can break the curses over your life and walk in a new level of anointing that God has for you today. Just like Jacob, you can look at your life and say, we will not carry the curse of our past anymore. Galatians chapter 3 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, so that Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham, might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Listen, because of Jesus, you have been freed from the curse of death. There is no curse anymore that you have to carry because Jesus already took it. Come on. He already took it. You don't have to pass on negative spiritual heritage to your family any longer. Your struggle does not have to be your son's struggle. Well, heart attacks have been in my family. Well, adultery has been in my family. Well, lust has been in our family. Well, alcoholism has just been in our family. Can we believe that the blood of Jesus is more than enough? 2 Corinthians, you can stand up with me. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Listen, the lie in your head that says you can't change. Barry Sanders, right? It's, it's not true. It's garbage. God will take a fearful man named Gideon and call him a mighty warrior. God can take an unhappy marriage, and he can heal your marriage so that you will be full of joy again. Listen, what took you 20 years to wreck, God can turn it around. Today I'm believing for new legacy. I'm believing for new outcomes. I'm believing that there could be new ministry in the next generation, that our, the next generation doesn't have to walk in the same curse that we've walked in. So Jesus, all over this place, Father, we come to you. Father, I'm grateful, Father, that you are the one who wants to bless the next third and fourth generation. Father, that we, Father, as parents and as, as families, we don't have to walk in the same curses that our ancestors walked in. But Father, I believe today that you're wanting to do a new thing with new heritage, new legacy. Father, let our breakthrough in our lives pave a way for others to break through. Father, we know that you want to encounter the next generation. Father, would you encounter them in the way that you've designed to encounter them? Father, forgive us in our marriage in the relationship with our sons and our daughters where we've cursed them by their behavior. Father, I pray that we would begin to call out the redemptive qualities that you have for them in Jesus' name. Come on, let's respond to this. Let's just sing out. I believe God wants to do things in us today, and so let's just allow him to do what he wants to do. Amen? Come on, let's sing out.
Thank you, Lord. You know, I just want to take a moment and just say, if there's anyone here today that you've never met Jesus, I'm telling you, it's the best thing that I've ever done. And I'm sure there are many other people in here that you would talk to that would say, this is the best thing I ever did. And I loved it because at the beginning of the service, Pastor Justin, he said, when did you stop? believing when did you start having fear when did you stop and I sat there and I thought about this and I thought you know we stop believing when our eyes aren't on Jesus and we live in a time now where there's so much fear because people don't have that personal relationship with Jesus and so before I even give any announcements, I just want to pray over you. If there is anyone here today, I don't want to embarrass you. It's not an embarrassing thing. I mean, I'm one that will stand here, that will say it here, will say it at work because Jesus transformed my life. Without him, I can't do anything. I mean, I get up in the mornings and I say, create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me out of way from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me because I cannot function without his Holy Spirit. And can I tell you, you can't either. You can't function in your full potential of what God has for you without God. You can't. So I just want to pray. But before I do, if you are one that has not received Jesus, we want to pray with you today. And I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm not going to have you raise your hand, but if you, after the service, if you receive Jesus today, we want to talk to you. We want to pray for you. We want to encourage you. We want to set you on the right track. But Lord, right now, I just pray. I pray for those right now that have not known you, that they would come to know you today, Jesus, that you would come into their heart and you would make them new in you. And Lord, I pray for those that have known you, that somewhere along the path, they allowed, we've allowed fear to come in or grief to come in, something that would remove us from your presence. And Lord, we just, I just say today, let your presence come. Renew in us, renew in us your salvation and set us on the right track. In Jesus' name, amen. Best decision, best decision. I mean, I just, it, it, it was a good word, Pastor Justin. I actually, just standing here, because I'm just processing and pondering, 
because there's so many things that can take us out in life. You know, and I only have just a second, but I just want to tell you, it's amazing. Like, I experienced death five and a half years ago. And I had a choice right there to believe that the death died and the call of God that God had on my life died with it. Or I could choose to believe who I am. Who I am. Not who the person who died was, but who I am in Christ. And there's some of you that are here today that I just feel like I can't move on. Let me tell you, don't take this wrong, but moving cities isn't going to help. Moving to another state isn't going to help. What's ever in here, you got to deal with with here, here, now. And there's some of you in here that have been believing for a long time that you've never lost faith. I haven't lost faith along the way. I felt like, Lord, I've kept the course, but this is not the way I wanted to go, and it doesn't feel good. Can I say to some of you today, God's going to do it for you. He's going to do it for you. Just ask him. He's waiting for you to ask. But sometimes the change has to be inside of us, not to move. Let the change come inside of you. I don't know who that was for for you today. I don't want to keep preaching. Um, I'm here to do announcements. There's a lot of them. <laughs> but I just bless many of you today. I don't know what it is. Can I just speak over some of you kids that have, people have said to you, you know what, they're just hyperactive. Can I tell you? That's right. But you're high potential. God has a plan. Your kids aren't hyperactive. They're high potential. Can I just encourage you? I have a daredevil, uh, I, well, I don't want to call her a daredevil, a dare angel, that she loves to jump off high things. And, you know, I've always learned this. I don't want to say to her, Stella, you're going to jump off of there and die. You know what I say to her? I tell her, Stella, I don't approve of that because she's going to do it anyways. And I don't want to build fear in her that she's going to get hurt. So, young people, high potential. We encourage you. Okay, here we go. We are going to talk a little bit about what is happening this week. This is an exciting week. So um, thank you for being here today. Um, we are excited you are here. We want to stay connected with you. In the front or the back of the seats, there is a connect card. Please fill it out. Put it in the box in the back. We want to stay connected with you. There are many ways to stay connected with us. We have an app you can put on your phone. You can go to our website and um, get on there. Get our emails to find out what's happening. We want to stay connected with you today. Today. Um, if you have met Jesus for your first time today or you, um, we want to talk to you afterwards, please come and talk to us. Also, you can stop at the Connect uh, Corner, and we have a little book for you. It's um, called a Fresh, a Fresh Start that will give you a guide. During this time, I do want to call up our prayer team. Thank you, prayer team, for coming and being faithful. If there's anything that you want prayer for today, please come and let them pray for you. Um, we can call upon the name of the Lord. He will answer, and he will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. So come on, just let them pray for you. Um, there are three ways to give. If for your tithe, we want to thank you for your generous giving. And you can do, give online at genhope.org. You can also text 84321, or there's a little black box in the back. You can drop it in there. Also, this week on Thursday is Pursuit Night. If you have not been coming to Pursuit Night, yes, it has been awesome. Holy Spirit has been joining us. and. All heaven's coming down. We are so excited. So please come and join us this Thursday on the 11th at 630. There is child care available. It's just one hour. It's a worth your hour of the week. Um, we also want to just let you know, heads up, on Sunday, November 21st, we'll be having Pastors Craig and Moni from Victory Faith in Spokane. Yes, we love them. They have... Um, impacted many of our lives in this church for many, many years. So I encourage you, come and be blessed by them. Okay, now this is super exciting. This is the month of November. Okay, how many people have started Christmas music? Oh, yeah, come on. Anybody? Yes, Patty, I am with you. We have got this. Okay, so for the month of November, we this is our outreach month. And I love outreach in Maple Valley. And you know, Map, I don't know if any of you know this, but Maple Valley has one of the top food banks. That's right. 
And uh, it's, it's really an exciting time, but I forgot my bag right here. If somebody could hand that. When you're headed out today, we want to show you, we have these um, grocery bags. We have done this for actually a long time. And I have loved this. We've done this since even my kids were little. And I remember all of you that are homeschooling, this is a good homeschool field trip. If you give them $1,000, make them count how much beans or how many cans of cranberries they can buy and how many bags that they're going to get to bring to the food bank. See, it's a whole study in itself. So when you guys leave, grab one of these today. This is exciting. I don't know if you know this, but Carrie Ann might tell you, Generational Hope has been one of the top givers for these bags. We have loaded up trucks and trucks and brought food to the food bank. It's exciting. Don't you love that? Come on, am I the only competitive person here? Come on, let's fill up not 100 this year. Let's do 1,000. Or did we do more than 1,000 before? Okay. 2,000. We'll do 2,000. Everybody grab one. We want you to. The second part of what we can do this month is the food bank is also what we do is during the month of Christmas, we have people that will make an appointment and they come to the food bank and they actually get to shop for their kids. And we have many stores and many people that donate to the community. They bring toys. But the one area that we they lack in is the, for our teens. So what we're doing this month is we are going to do a gift card drive that we can help support the food bank in that. So if your gift cards could be either $25 or $50, we like to make sure that our teens get at least a $50 gift card. And I just want to tell you, it's so exciting. Last year, I got to be a part of the food bank where I got to help them go shopping for their kids. And you would not believe just the look on these families' faces as they just went in and they got gifts for their their kids and the older ones gift cards. I could stand up here all day and tell you how amazing it is. Get involved. And if there are times that you need to volunteer, please get on the Maple Valley website and see if there's anything you can come and do and volunteer. It's really a great outreach for this area, local area. So I just encourage you to be a part of that. Give to that. Take these, fill them up. And let's bring them back. We want to have them back by November 21st. So it gives you a couple weeks. Okay? That's it. Can you believe it? You survived it. Thank you. Have a wonderful week.